Today we're going to learn how we can create single page applications using AngularJS. So a single page application is a web page where we have a master page and subsequent page views are dynamically loaded into a portion of the master or the shell page. So if we look at this blog as an example, I have a master web page when I load up and we can see that this content right here is related to the, uh, the home page. When I click on about, only this content that's in the center of the page is actually being swapped out, but there is no full page refresh. As we browse between the two URLs, we can see that the URL is changing, but there is no full page refresh. And so this is anything in the center is essentially the dynamic content that gets swapped out. And so we can easily accomplish this using AngularJS. So the way Angular does this kind of behind the scenes is using Ajax to bring in a partial or a partial HTML file and puts that content in a certain section of your web page. So let's see how we can do this. So I've set up in a starter HTML file. I have set up a module called blog and I have three scripts associated with this page. I have the Angular JS file. We have a particular module called ng route, which is stored inside this other file. And we'll sh I'll show you how to get that. And we have our own external JS file. And in our page, we essentially have a main container div and we have three sections. We have the header, which contains the navigation. We have the center div, which will have the content dynamically injected in here, and we have a footer. So the first thing that I have is the main JS file. So I've set up an Angular module called blog, and let's look at our directory structure. We also have another folder called partials. So in this partials folder, we have an index.html file, and we can see we just have a snippet of HTML related to the home page. If we look at the about partial, we have something similar. So the content from these two partial files will ultimately be injected into this div as we browse between the two different pages. And so we have a master shell page and these are our two partials. So let's see how we can bring this in and define a set of routes to inject HTML into this one div. So first, in order to get started, we need this angular route min file. So to get that, we can actually go to the Angular JS site, click on the download button, and there's this link called Extras. They have several different modules that we, we can incorporate, but the one we're interested in is Angular Route, so you can download the uncompressed or the compressed version. So I've already actually downloaded it, and it's inside my JS folder. So if I load up my page, you'll see everything's, uh, we have all our scripts loaded, but, and as we browse between the two links, no content gets swapped out, but we actually have a working page. So let's see how we can start defining a set of routes. So we've incorporated the Angular route module into our page. So let's go ahead and inject that into our application or into our own module. So we can say ng route as one of the dependencies for our module that we defined. And now we want to set up the different routes for our page. So I can call a, a function called config. And this config function takes another function, but this is where we're going to set up all the different routes for our page. So this function actually takes a service called route provider. So we need this route provider service to be injected into our config function so that we can actually set up all the different routes. So the first route that we want to set up is just slash, which is kind of the root of our web page. So when we hit the root, let's load a particular template. In this case, we want to load up this index.html partial. So we can say route provider, and I'm just going to space this out a little bit so it looks a little cleaner. When, and the first argument we, want, uh, we pass to it is what's the route? So in this case, slash represents the root or the home. The second argument is an object. And this object takes uh, several different parameters, but the one that we're interested in right now is we want to tell it, let's load up this partial and let's, and let's tell it so to use this partial for this route. So we can say template URL and let's give it the path to that partial. So we can say partials slash index.html. So when we hit this root, we will load up this index.html partial inside of this div. So let's try it out. When I refresh the page, 
we have hit the root of our application, but for some reason, the actual content isn't showing up. So why is that? Well, we haven't actually told Angular where do we want this partial to be injected into. For all Angular knows, it, we can inject this anywhere, and so we haven't told it that we want to inject it into this one div. So the way we do that is by giving this div a directive called ngView. So by giving this directive ngView to this div, we can say that there any route that we hit, this partial HTML will essentially be injected into this particular div. So we'll load up the page. And now you can see, okay, great. Now we have the home partial being loaded. So let's go ahead and set up the route for the about URL. So we can say when we hit slash about, let's do the same thing. But we'll say template URL. We'll go to partials slash about.html. Refresh. Now when I browse between the two links, we can see that the middle section is dynamically being swapped out through Ajax using Angular routes. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up one final route. So what happens if the user types in gibberish for a particular route? They say, Maybe they want to go to about, and they type in a bunch of garbage. Okay, well, we don't have a route set up, so it just shows the shell page, but we have no dynamic content being injected into that particular middle div. So let's handle that use case. So we can say, maybe we want to redirect the user back to the home page in the event that a bad URL was typed. So we can say, otherwise, and one of the properties that we can specify is redirect to. And in this case, I want to redirect to which route? Well, in this case, the home. So if I refresh, okay, now when I type in gibberish into the URL, we get redirected back to the home page. Great, so what happens if we want to associate a particular controller for each of these partials. Well, the route provider allows us to do that. So let's go ahead and set up a controller for the home page. So we can say app.controller, and we'll call this home controller. And now we want to specify that this template uses that controller. So we pass in another property called controller and we give it the name of the controller, so home controller. So now that we've set up the controller, let's make some of this data a little bit dynamic. Say maybe we can create an unordered list of blog posts. So maybe we have a series of blog posts, let me call this blog post equals an array, and the first post is going to equal we just call it blog post one, blog post, oops, spelled that wrong. Okay, so we have three simple blog posts that's defined in our home controller. So now, how do we access this? Well, because we've associated this controller with this set of HTML, now we can, and we've applied blog post to the scope, now we can access it from the scope. So we can say ng repeat equals post in blog post where this blog post keyword associates with what's the variable that's defined on this particular scope. You can just echo that out into this list item element. Refresh, and now we see dynamic content. So let's go ahead and swap out. Uh, let's make this about partial a little bit dynamic too. So we'll go back and create a particular controller for this one. We'll call this about controller. And I'm just going to take out some of this data and we'll just make this dynamic. So in the end, we'll call this name. And we can go back to the controller and say scope.name is equal to David Tang. We can also say scope. 
we'll call this bio. So scope.bio is equal to that string. So this data is just hard coded into our controllers, but this can come from a database and we can make different requests to it using maybe the HTTP service. But again, this doesn't have to be hard coded in, which it, ideally it shouldn't be hard coded in. So if I refresh, great, we still see the dynamic content. I go to the about route. Oh, it looks like something is not working. Oh, and it's because we haven't associated this about route with the controller. So we got to specify controller. You can say about controller. Okay, let's try that again. So let's go back to home. We'll refresh the page. Now if I go, okay, great. Now we see David, we see my bio, and we can see dynamic content being swapped out in our shell page. 